Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. My name is Jeff Pollock. I'm Vice President of Products here at Oracle. And uh, we're here today with the Oracle Database World On Demand session for Golden Gate Microservices in Action. Thanks for joining in. I'll be providing a brief introduction around Golden Gate Microservices, telling you why they're important and what's going on with them. And then I'll be handing over to Werner He, who is here with me now. Um, and he's gonna be taking you through a demonstration of the Golden Gate Microservices in action. We'll take a look at how to replicate transactions from on-premises database environments over to Oracle Cloud Autonomous Database, and you'll get a real sense of how those Golden Gate Microservices work. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight in. Okay, we're here today to talk about Oracle Golden Gate. Uh, Oracle Golden Gate is the most trusted solution for data integration in the industry today. We've got thousands of customers in over 180 countries. We're in over 80% of the global Fortune 100 uh, with Oracle Golden Gate and pretty consistently uh, rated number one in real-time data and data fabric strategies. In fact, the Oracle Golden Gate technology itself has been um, you know, a leader around innovation for a very long time. Uh, the original Golden Gate technology came from a California-based startup that was founded in 1996 actually the very first data replication startup in the world, uh, really focusing in on those canonical data event ledgers, which are at the heart uh, still today of what we do with Golden Gate Microservices, first in the industry to support Apache Kafka, first in the industry to support an hourly uh, metered cloud-based replication solution in 2016. Uh, these microservices architectures that we're talking about in depth today originally rolled out uh, over four years ago in 2017, uh, the first tool to combine change data capture with streaming integration and uh, streaming analytics in 2018, uh, first to deploy on tactical edge solutions in 2020, and then also the first to deploy a second generation elastic and fully managed cloud service uh, here in 2021. So Golden Gate's always been at the forefront of innovation and these microservices really are at the heart of a lot of the latest generation of uh, innovations that have been happening. Now, a lot of people think about Golden Gate uh, platform for its uh, strong tradition around data event replication. So supporting transaction replication for databases, uh, change data capture, data high availability, those types of use cases have always been at the heart and the very core of what Golden Gate does. What a lot of people don't know is that the Golden Gate platform has evolved in the last several years, around the last five to seven years, to include comprehensive capabilities around data pipelines, streaming analytics, as well as data governance, including data verification, uh, built-in uh, metadata catalog for uh, its uh, self-service pipeline editor, et cetera. And so Golden Gate really is being aimed at um, uh, tackling this comprehensive single platform for uh, creating real-time data fabrics. And that's really the vision and the direction that we're going with Golden Gate is that one comprehensive place where all of our customers can build out their next generation real-time streaming data fabrics uh, on multi-cloud and hybrid environments. And that's really at the heart of what Golden Gate is doing today. Now, a lot of people mistakenly believe that Golden Gate is uh, really an Oracle only or an Oracle focused solution. And while it's true that we have better integration with Oracle and Oracle databases and Oracle Cloud than any other data integration tools out there, uh, it's also true that we have this strong heritage of uh, support for non-Oracle platforms. In fact, the original startup, uh, Golden Gate, was originally founded to cover HP Tandem nonstop databases and other mainframe environments. And it wasn't until much later in the life cycle of the technology and of that startup company that uh, Oracle databases and other um, uh, uh, OLTP engines uh, began to be added to that. And so we've had this 20 year plus tradition with covering non-Oracle technologies and still today that's really core uh, to the Oracle Golden Gate capabilities. All of the, the technologies shown on the left-hand side, including relational databases, non-relational engines, um, even SaaS applications and on-premises applications are certified uh, with Golden Gate and we've got world-class enterprise solutions. Uh, now, one of the fastest growth areas for Golden Gate has been over on the right-hand side uh, in the last five years or so, customers using the technology to provide a continuously flowing stream of transactions into the cloud and into their big data environments. And so Golden Gate truly is a multi-cloud solution uh, with certified support for a wide variety of public clouds, as well as a wide variety of big data technologies. So Golden Gate uh, today does support over a thousand different uh, combinations of data stores, platforms, cloud technologies, databases, etc. Um, uh, truly providing that trusted 
whole enterprise multi-cloud solution for real-time data events. Today, of course, we're here to talk about the microservices architecture, and we'll see um, a real uh, interesting uh, demo with all of our latest Golden Gate uh, 21C capabilities around microservices. Uh, for those that don't know much about microservices, microservices are a modern way of building uh, software applications. When you use Golden Gate in an on-premises environment or in uh, third-party public clouds, we actually provide our own uh, control plane or our own controller. It's called Golden Gate Service Manager. With that Golden Gate Service Manager, you have access to uh, four distinct uh, Golden Gate microservices. You have a microservices um, uh, component for administration of your deployments. You have a microservices component for distributing um, uh, transactions between Golden Gate uh, microservices. The receiver service is what would be uh, deployed into a different physical location and it would receive the transactions that are being sent by the distribution service. And then uh, the performance metric service uh, can be deployed in any of these Golden Gate microservices deployments and that is what gives you the telemetry and monitoring capabilities uh, local for these microservices. So these microservices themselves are incredibly flexible. They can run uh, in Docker containers we support uh, deployments in Kubernetes, uh, OpenStack, um, and when you run or, uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Golden Gate from OCI data centers or Oracle Cloud data centers, you actually get the benefits of tying in natively with the Oracle Cloud Control Plane itself. So incredibly flexible set of services. You're going to see these in action. Each individual microservice is 100% fully controlled through open uh, REST APIs, and uh, each microservice has its own built-in uh, user interface um, that is a browser-based user interface so that you can control uh, those microservices uh, directly. And you'll see what that looks like in uh, the demo today. And so you can run Golden Gate both as a uh, service mesh or uh, what you'll also hear about in other presentations, a data mesh. Um, that allows us to do node to node communications using the Golden Gate distribution service and the Golden Gate receiver service. Uh, this is super useful for multi-cloud uh, deployments. It's also very useful for large enterprises that may need to uh, locate uh, Golden Gate alongside critical resources or between data centers. Um, we can also deploy Golden Gate as a hub type solution. So in this case, the microservices would all be deployed, uh, for example, in a single container. And you have the benefits of a greatly simplified management framework or you know, some uh, uh, deployment topology that works uh, fantastic for single projects. So Golden Gate is extremely flexible. It can be deployed in both architectures. Now, the reason why it's important uh, that you're here today to listen to this demonstration on microservices and why we strongly encourage you to adopt now ranges from what's going on with our product and the product roadmap and also you know, benefits that we think are gonna be very important to you. So on the product side, uh, microservices is the strategic direction of the Golden Gate product. As you saw in that earlier chart, uh, we've uh, had microservices available for several years. Um, it's been uh, the heart and kind of the core of what we've been recommending for Golden Gate deployments for a long time. And beginning with Golden Gate 21.1, we've announced the deprecation schedule of the older classic architecture. So um, you'll have several more years where you can continue to run classic and uh, get support on that. But um, going forward, uh, we want to be totally clear that all of the new innovations, the new work, and uh, going forward, the strategic direction of the product is microservices. So that's an important reason to cut over. Now, microservices are available for all major Golden Gate platforms, not just the Oracle database, but all of our uh, core non-Oracle databases, our big data and NoSQL environments. And we also have the microservices support uh, that can support all of the different uh, cloud environments as well. Important to understand that microservices uh, are not required for uh, both sides of a Golden Gate equation. So you can actually use microservices with older classic architecture deployments. And this is important because it's not a forcing function to do kind of these big bang upgrades where you have to move everything to microservices at once. So for example, you can have some older environments running older versions of Golden Gate on Golden Gate classic architecture, and they can still interoperate uh, sending transactions and receiving transactions uh, from newer Golden Gate microservices instances. And so those um, they're fully compatible um, and we have uh, what are called compatibility mode based operations. And so this gives you a way to sort of incrementally migrate to microservices in more of a phased way. Microservices are and have been our main branch for Golden Gate. And so this is really the most stable um, code line for Golden Gate. When you think about our customers that run Golden Gate on some of the most important 
uh, financial, banking, e-commerce systems in the world, telecommunications, switching environments. Uh, it's super critical that Golden Gate is rock solid, and uh, that's very much the case. So all of our core uh, technologies around extracts, replicates, trail protocols, these carry forward from that long tradition of highly stable, rock solid Go Golden Gate deployments. Now, when we think about the features and functions on the right-hand side, uh, we know that microservices are going to be a huge benefit to you. Number one, uh, it's around security. Uh, microservices are much more secure than the classic architecture. Uh, you've got full role-based privilege models for role-based access control, new authentication and single sign-on options. You've got improved network security, including, including support uh, for mutual TLS 1.3 over WebSockets for transmission. Um, you've got uh, uh, full encryption at every tier, data at rest, data in motion. So this is fully uh, cloud ready for uh, highly distributed, highly decentralized, um, you know, WAN to WAN uh, type communications. And, uh, you know, this is just really a modern architecture for folks that are running uh, their environments on mixed cloud, multi-cloud, uh, hybrid, or data center to data center uh, communications. We've got a whole new improved model for uh, performance upgrades, you know, life cycle, including patching and continuous uh, integration, continuous delivery. So the microservices architecture is faster. It's uh, multi-threaded uh, from a distribution service standpoint. So when you do those node to node communications, that gives you uh, certain performance advantages over certain uh, types of networks. Um, it's much, much easier to do uh, patching and upgrades. Um, it uh, doesn't, uh, you know, you can do this now using containers uh, just by unmounting and remounting drives, uh, greatly simplified lifecycle controls uh, once you move into the microservices model. The microservices model and these hub deployments allows you to uh, greatly reduce the number of Golden Gate homes that you're running. So it can really simplify that enterprise environment for our customers that are running hundreds or even thousands of Golden Gate installs across the enterprise. Um, makes it a lot easier to, to manage at scale. And then finally, um, as you'll see in the demo today, uh, the Golden Gate microservices are really designed to be used in that mesh distributed architecture as well as hub architectures. And it, uh, they support these remote configurations. So you can do uh, remote capture, uh, remote uh, delivery uh, into pretty much all of the most uh, strategic platforms for, for Golden Gate. So that, uh, you know, the underlying infrastructure for microservices gives us a much easier way to give you highly available disaster recovery based deployment models uh, for Golden Gate microservices. You can move uh, deployments around uh, much easier, uh, you know, as you may need to do that to support your shifting infrastructure requirements. And importantly, it allows you to operate Golden Gate as a service or in what we call in a service mesh or as a data mesh um, uh, inside of uh, Docker, Kubernetes, OpenShift. Uh, you still, of course, have the option uh, like you would in the old days to run Golden Gate uh, directly on your database servers if that you know, suits your needs as well. So a lot of flexibility with this new microservices architecture. So for the demo today uh, that we've prepared, the core scenario is about how to replicate these on-premises environments into uh, the Oracle Autonomous Database. Now, the central features here that you'll be seeing are going to be the same sets of features you would use for non-Oracle databases and even non-Oracle Cloud environments. And so, you know, keep that in mind. We're focusing on one specific scenario uh, on-premise uh, to Oracle Autonomous Database, but the same basic principles apply. These are the same microservices, the same microservices screens that you would see uh, in uh, any of the supported Golden Gate platforms. And keep in mind that Golden Gate can run as a hub or a mesh. For this particular demo, we're really focusing on this mesh style approach. This allows us uh, to demonstrate to you what it looks like to use the distribution service and the receiver service, um, which are the two nodes that would be communicating uh, to one another using a secure uh, WebSockets connection. Um, when you use uh, OCI Golden Gate or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Golden Gate from the cloud, for example, uh, ordinarily that might be more of a hub architecture where you do remote uh, extraction from the on-premises environment, and then you do a delivery directly into the autonomous environment. And so that can be really a simpler approach. It doesn't involve uh, the distribution and, and receiver service. Uh, but for today's demo, we wanted to show you how those work so that you get a sense of uh, all the, the various microservices. So uh, with that, I think that's enough from me. Uh, hopefully that was a good introduction into uh, Golden Gate Microservices and what you'll see. And now really to the heart of today's session, uh, let me introduce you over to Werner He. Werner, take it away. Hi everyone, this is Werner and uh, thanks for Jeff's introduction. And uh, uh, so 
Now I'm going to show you a quick demo of how to set up Golden Gate from the on-premise to uh, Golden Gate OCI Cloud. And so this is a slide uh, to show you in the high level what we are going to do today. Uh, we have a on-premise data center on the left side. Right side is the OCI Cloud. Inside the on-premise data center, we have a Golden Gate uh, version 21 microservice architecture running, and it's capturing data from an Oracle 19C database running on-premise. And uh, we are using the remote capture, and the extract will uh, generate the trail file. The trail file will be read by uh, distribution server, and distribution server is going to connect to the OCI Cloud Golden Gate service, uh, which is uh, behind the scene, there's an Nginx uh, reverse proxy server running. And then from Nginx, uh, the connection will go to the receiver server. Uh, so the connection between the distribution server and Nginx is uh, SSL encoded. Um, when the receiver server receives the trail file, it's going to write locally, and then going to get a replica, it's going to pick up the trail file and push that out to the OCI uh, autonomous data warehouse. And on the right side, everything's uh, flowing inside the Oracle Cloud, and the left, left side, everything is uh, running on the on-premise. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we can set up this from end to end, including configure and set up the uh, extract on-premise, uh, set up the distribution pass from distribution server to receiver server, and then set up the replicate to push the data to the uh, OCI uh, autonomous data warehouse. Um, so this is the high-level uh, overview of what we're going to do today. Uh, now let's just jump in uh, to the uh, system. So I have two browsers open uh, for this Chrome browser. It's currently connecting to a Golden Gate OCI instance running in the cloud. And uh, you can see uh, this, we have nothing configured here, extract replicas, it's all empty. And uh, this, because this is the OCI Golden Gate service, so when you connect, you actually connect to the administration server and you can check there's distribution server, performance server, and receiver server, okay? So all clean, this is the target side. And on the source side, I'm putting the source side in the uh, Safari window, which is my on-premise. So in my on-premise, uh, I have access to the service manager. Um, you will see there's uh, one deployment that we call the GGMA 213 DK Dell. Um, so this will be the deployment we're going to use as a source uh, on the source side. So we are going to configure the extract here inside the administration server and uh, configure the distribution pass in the distribution server. And then we're going to come to target to configure the replicate here in the, uh, the replicate OCI Golden Gate. So that's the environment. And um, before we can configure any extract, we of course have to configure the uh, credential store to tell how, how extract is going to uh, connect to database. So I'm not going to go through the detail because today's um, demo is really end to end, focus on the high level, uh, but there's detail on how you should set up your database, how you set up your Golden Gate users. So I'm going to skip that because just assuming on-premise database already fully set up, Golden Gate user is already uh, created. So you just cr uh, create the uh, credential, leave the credential domain empty, which will be the Oracle Golden Gate. And the alias, we can call it GGS source. And the user ID is here because I already created CPompong GGS. By the way, this is a um, pluggable database. So I have to put in how I connect. This is my uh, on-premise um, uh, the uh, server. So I just put in the on-premise server's name. All right, so the database connection string is configured, and to make sure it's working, we have to test whether it can connect. It connects successfully. And then we need to add a schema data. I have a bunch of schema from uh, user U01, U02, all the way to U010. So let's say we pick up like a U05, uh, I'm sorry, U1 to U10, we pick up like U5 to uh, do this. Because I am uh, doing that in the PDB, so the PDB, I have to put in the PDB name in here. So the first part is the PDB name, the second part is schema name, 
and uh, you first can check whether there's uh, you know schema data schema transaction I'm sorry the schema level trend data enable or not it should say no nope, no data display so now I can safely add that and let's go check whether it's there. Okay, so we find out the two tables there, which is good. So the schema trend data is done. So the next step will be to configure the extract, right? So everything is can be done in the web UI. So we want to configure the integrated extract, and we give the name. So this is the first two letters of the trail, and you just let the trail sitting in the uh, by the default directory. You can change the size if you want, and um, the trail will ask us to start from you know zero and zero, which is from trail sequence number zero in the beginning of the uh, RBA zero. And um, here you can leave everything as it is, and the this is the part we choose which particular credential we're using. Remember, we just uh, created the GGS source. So you choose this. This will allow the uh, session to log into the database. And then you can choose which PDB you want to capture. Okay. So because this um, credential will actually log into the CDB. So you have to choose which, PD, uh, which PDB you want to capture that from. And the rest you can leave as is, or you can use the encryption, or you can specify the manager option, like you want to restart, auto restart, uh, all these options. Uh, so we'll leave them as is and click next. It will give you the skeleton of the parameter file based on information you put in just now. So one thing I want to put in is I want to capture DDL. So I'll say uh, DDL map included. You have to make sure you specify the PDB name, U5 dot star semicolon. That basically tells you, hey, you know, I want to capture everything under U5. So now the extract is created. Now you need to start it up. Let's start the extract. So what will happen is in the background, uh, the extract will be registered to your database. And then it will start up running. So when this check mark is green, that means it is successfully registered extract and extract has started. And to check the detail of extract, you just click on the detail, go to the report. It gives you all the report file, tells you the parameter to use this, and then the database is connected to. And then when you see the runtime messages, that means the extract is fully up and running. So by now, the trail HH has been created on the source side. So we have the extract successfully started on the source. And then the next step is we are going to configure the distribution path to send this trail HH to the target side. So to configure the distribution path, we need to go to the distribution service. right? And uh, But to do that, uh, there are several things we have to um, configure here. I have done part of the job, which I'm going to show you. Because we are trying to use SSL, that means both the source and target need to have the uh, correct certificate, right? And so we go to the service manager in the version 21. Uh, one of the advantage is it actually give a a web UI to allow you to manage all the certificates. And if you choose the deployment, you can see I already have the client certificates created. It's a self-signed certificate. Uh, for the client to use to connect to the target. And also, I have added a DigiCert global root certificate here because my target, if you look into here, this is my target browser. If you look for the certificate, it is actually using a wildcard certificate because by default, the OCI Golden Gate is using a wildcard certificate. And that certificate is certific certified by the DigiCert. So, the final root certificate is DigiCert Global Root Certificate. So I need to add this certificate into the CA certificates as a trusted certificate on my client. So when my client connect to the target, the target will present his wildcard certificate, and we will see it is actually have a root certificate certify that. If we trust the root certificate here, then we will trust the target side certificate. So that's the reason I put it in here.
And I have another video to go through the detail of how you pull the certificate from the digital website, how you edit that into the uh, CA certificates here, which I'm not going to go through in detail in today's um, presentation. If you're interested, you can watch for the other uh, video, have all the detail. And that, uh, despite the certificate, the distribution paths also need to log in to the target, right? And to log into the target, that means we have to create a user ID and a password for the source distribution path to log in, which in this case already created a user called a GGNet, which is an operator user. And I'm going to share this username and the password with the source. So, so the source, when it connect, it can get authenticated by target and create this uh, distribution path. Uh, so this user ID and password management is very similar to the uh, user ID and password management for the database login. So if we go to the administrative server here and click on the configuration, uh, you see we already put in the database user ID and a password in here, right? So now we just need to put in the same thing, just create a different domain. Let's call it the GG network. Just a domain name and alias. We can call it WSSNet, which means I'm going to use this particular alias whenever I try to refer to the user ID and the password. So the user ID password will not be plain text in my distribution pass configuration file. So this is the user ID which match this particular user ID I created, right? So ggnet. Okay, so now I have a another alias called WSSNet, which has the user ID and the password information which can log into the other Golden Gate instance. Now I'm ready to create the distribution path here. So if I do create, and if I choose the source, the extract, it will automatically list out the trail file. So it will associate this trail with this particular distribution path as a source. So which means it tells to read from this source trail and then the authentication, I'm using the user ID alias. Um, and the target, I'm going to use the WSS as a protocol. And the target the host, basically, I'll just copy paste this entire host name from here. And the port number is 443, because that's the port the OCI GGS engine server is listening to. And that's the only port we open to the outside world. And this is target trail file name. When the landed to the target, um, what do you want to call it, right? So I just give it, a, give it two letters, WW. And this is the user ID alias part, You how you find the alias. The alias is under GG network, like we just specified. And the alias is called WSSNet, right? So this way, I do not have to put in the user ID and the password in here. So everything's secured. And the same thing, we can adjust the trail file size, right? And then you can also tell the other you know, configuration uh, wallets, you know, uh, the, 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 the how to encrypt that. Uh, these are all the uh, normal options. I'll just leave them as is. So right now, everything looks good. So I do create a pass. So the pass is created. So now I can try to start it up. It's going to try to connect to the OCI GGS right now. So it's successfully connected and see this uh, is green. And then you come to the receiver server of the OCI side, you will see the pass also show up here, right? So this is the, the pass coming from the, uh, the uh, 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 on-premise side. So everything's connected and everything's uh, if I do any transaction on the source, it's going to flow over here. Now I have the WW trail created. I can go ahead on the target side to create the um, uh, uh, replicate. Okay, so the same thing, the web UI. I'm going to create a parallel replicate using non integrated, which gives me better performance. Oh, by the way, before we do that, we have to register the database. The same thing like on the source side, we have to register the uh, how to config connect to the database on target side. So right now, I don't have the database registered here. And there's an easy way to do that. Um, so if this is OCI Golden Gate, we actually help you to register the database in the OCI console. 
So there's a register database option uh, in the Golden Gate uh, menu. You, when you click on this, it will automatically pull out the database information uh, to help you register. For example, we can call it uh, the test ADW, okay? Or, and the name, this alias name, because the ADW is my, my test uh, uh, database. And uh, so here, make sure you choose select the database. And it, since it's an autonomous database, you click here, and then it's going to search all the autonomous database, and it will, all the autonomous database in the same compartment will come up here. So I will choose this one, ADW test, and uh, it automatically uses the GG admin because autonomous database, it has a pre-created GG admin user. You only need to put in the, uh, the password here. Okay, and then just click register. It will try to create the database register in here to register this database. So once this is done, it will actually automatically sync into this Golden Gate configuration. You will see it appear here. So let's give it, normally it takes like a couple minutes to do that. Okay, so now the database registration part is finished successfully. You see it shows the status active. So if you come into the admin server, go to the configuration, you'll see it's automatically synced over. Okay, so this is a new entry we created. And to make sure this particular uh, database alias work, you can try to connect, see whether that works. Yeah, it's successfully connected. And because I have done some testing before, I already have a checkpoint table created. I can reuse this checkpoint table to create my replicate, or otherwise you can create a new checkpoint table. So now this uh, database registration is ready. We can go back to create the replicate. Okay, we want to use a non-integrated parallel replicate for better performance. And the process name, you can call it AD. And the same thing, you have to choose the credential domain. It is under Oracle Golden Gate. And the alias is that alias we just created. So once you pull that in, it's trying to log into database. And then the trail name is the trail name we created by the particular uh, distribution pass we just created. And I leave everything the default. And the checkpoint table, you might want to choose this existing checkpoint table. And make sure you, you, you always specify checkpoint table for replicate because it's very important. And then you can specify the other options, which I'm going to leave uh, default for this testing. And then it's going to ask you to create the replicate parameter file. It gives you a skeleton here. So I'm going to add in a couple of DDL statements as well. And also the map statement, because I'm mapping from a PDB database, I need to add in the PDB name in there. And basically it's anything from the PDB coming here, I'll map that to the target, okay? So that's, and also another thing I would suggest everybody to add is add in the batch SQL. This actually helps you when you have a lot of batch process uh, the batch processing operations you want to uh, process. So now we have everything ready. We just click create. So the replicate will be created here. And now I can click on this and uh, to start it up. Okay, it's up and running. So to check the replicate status, go to the detail and go to the report file. So this the replica report file. Okay. And look, look, it's already started the applier and the mapper. So by default, we start two mapper and the four appliers. This is the feature of the parallel replica. So allow you to, uh, to do the parallel execution. And then it will tell you it connect to the autonomous database 
right, the database information and the runtime messages, and it's open this trail. So everything looks good. So, so far, the uh, extract, the distribution pass, the replicate has all been created and are ready to replicate some transaction. So now let's just do some transaction uh, on this source, which is the, this is my source database. So basically what the script does is it will dump in 200,000 records. Every 2,000 records I will have a commit and those are the data we're going to put into the source table. And then we should be able to see that data flowing through the uh, extract and replicate and coming into the uh, target system. So let's first check the source system. Check on the extract. You see the statistics and see it's already capturing that right now. And uh, if you look at the source side performance metric server, The U5, it shows you all the process, process information of this particular extract, how much memory, how much um, the uh, disk I.O. is doing. And uh, also, the uh, you look at the cache manager status and how much you know, memory it's using for the cache to cache the transactions. And we can see these are all the uh, location, how much cache it's uh, locating. And the same thing, it will tell you about the database statistics. So by now, it's already captured everything. So the same thing, if you go to the distribution server and you check the detail, it will tell, tell you how much it's capturing and where it's, it, it's writing right now. So the, all the uh, data will be sent. If you look at statistics, it has all the statistics here as well. So look on the uh, replica side. Look at the detail, the same thing you do the statistics. It already finished all the transaction replicating 200,000 to the target. And the same thing, you can check the uh, checkpoint information. It tells you where it's reading right now. Um, report a file, you will find all this uh, data we captured and the resolve the uh, map for the, uh, the uh, target tables. And also, it will uh, tell you if there's any DDL happen, you know, what it is. It's going to do uh, all the DDLs and do all the DMLs. So basically, right now, so from a source to target, everything's uh, synced up. And if you want to add some new tables, because we are using the wildcard in the replicate, we can go back to the extract. Let's see, I want, now I want to add some new table. I give it a little bit more data this time so it can run a little bit longer. So this will be another um, schema U6 and you'll see suddenly everything starts jumping up because we saw the new data coming in. We started capturing the data on the extract side. And the same thing if you go to the replica side, also there's a performance metric server. If you will monitor the replicate, um, there are several replicate processes we probably want to apply. Go to the replicate um, applier. See how that goes. You will see the similar jump here as well. You see this is extract. It's processing the larger transaction coming in. And uh, the replicate, you will see, starting using more system resource to push the data through. And because it has four pliers, there's other pliers as well. So if you go to uh, this particular window, go to the overview. And you can try to look at other pliers data as well. And they are catching up.
So by now, the extract has pretty much done its job. Everything is coming down. The, 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 the resource usage is coming to the idle again. Uh, and then Replicate by far already caught up too as well. So uh, it processed everything and uh, back to the normal status. And if you want to check, you can actually check the particular uh, Replicate statistics. Let me go there. And you see all the 500,000 for the second set of table have been fully captured by the Replicate. So this gives you the real time uh, you know, uh, system monitoring capability in case you need to troubleshoot any uh, performance issues. Um, so again, you know, today's content is um, to show you how to get the data replication from the on-premise to the OCI Golden Gate setup, and both are using Golden Gate version 21. And again, my name is Warner. I am the uh, product manager for Oracle Golden Gate, and hopefully uh, this video uh, is helpful uh, to you, and thanks for your time, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.